Look at all the snappers. Surprise under a favorite overhang, a coral trap turns from the intruding photographer, expressing disapproval by intensive eyeing its color. A clownfish rests in safety on a stinging sea anemone. There's the clownfish. The outline of a royal angelfish is broken by its stripes. Look at all the stripes. The harlequin tuscan fish possesses large teeth capable of crushing shells. Look at the size of those teeth. A shoal of moorfish idols is protected by a combination of color and behavior. The outline of each fish is broken by the wide dark stripes and the shoal itself. It's a further confusion to predators making it difficult to see where one fish ends and the next begins. Their name may be tied to an obscure tradition. In many parts of the Indian and Pacific Oceans, native fishermen are said to have held them in great reverence. Hence their name, Moorfish, being an Anglo-Indian term for Mahomedan, any Moorish idols noted by these fishermen were supposedly returned to the water with an apologetic blow. See? Moving over a jagged coral bed are contorted sheets of a purple encyclopedic coral centered, each extending up to three feet across. Farther left are smaller colonies of lumpy serviced brown Echinopora mammosa. The surrounding corals are species of Acropora, whose branches may cover 75% of a reef. Need a coral reef? The frond-like branches of a large deep-water gorgonian or sea fan coral act as protective hosts to a clinging other star far left and a brittle star raising them free of sediments on the sea floor. At the fan's base, a small, more fragile gorgonian coral grows up towards clear water. Here's the gorgonian. The leathery folds of a soft coral colony center contrast with the spiny skeletons of its reef-building relatives and the shadows around Green Island. The tiny animals' polyps that build these structures are retracted inside them, awaiting darkness. Then they emerge and feed, covering the plain surfaces with a waving mass of colored tentacles. And all, this is living, this is an example of living coral. Excuse me. The interlocking fingers of the reef builder Acropanthus form a pair of coral slabs, each two feet wide and encrusted with other varieties. This is an example of a reef builder. The questing tentacles of tapestry polyps unfold at nightfall as the colony, typically small and compact, prepares to feed. See that? The blunt rosettes of Gonalpora tinnidans polyps emerge from their casing to feed. They are among the few corals to doze do so by day. Viewed over a foreground of staghorn coral, the stony coral plains of Montipora colonized the ledges of a tidal pool over near Heron Island. Hmm? Major skeleton is a typical result of the reproduction of brain coral polyps. 
this is brain coral. A stubble of hyperextended polyps appears from the surface of the snake-like soft coral. Sarcotithitin tromboicorum growing on the sea floor. Yeah. Wow. Fish, wiggling at the sensitive whiskers from which they take their name, swim in defense formation, searching for food in the shallow enclaves of lagoons and estuaries. They are well defended against predators, since each of their fins conceals an inch long venomous spine. In shoals like the concentration of vicious needles, it's almost impenetrable. This is the striped catfish. Peacock soul camouflages itself against green sand, deftly adjusting the color of rings and cells in its skin to match the background. Me camouflage.